Okay, welcome to section 4.7. Uh, I'm sad to report this is our last section we're going to cover in this course, so hope you guys enjoy it. Um, in this section, we're always going to be looking to find the absolute max or min of a function. And the function is either going to be defined on a closed interval, which is good because then you can use the closed interval method from section 4.1. If you're not as fortunate, then it will be defined on an open interval. In that case, you'll use the first derivative test to find the local extrema and then, and then show that it's also going to be global there. All right, let's take this first example. You're given that the sum of two numbers is six, and you want to and if the, um, find the numbers if the sum of the square of the first plus twice the square of the second is to be a minimum. So uh, the function that we're trying to find the minim minimum of here is the function that is adding the square of the first plus twice the square of the second. Um, oftentimes a picture is a good idea, but not, not in this case. But, but like, like I was saying, our goal here is to come up with a function that's going to be mini minimized in this, in this case. It's going to be either defined as on a closed interval or open interval. If you let x be the first number, y is the second number, then the function is, that, that we're going to find the minimum value of, is the function s equals x squared plus 2y squared. But the problem, a pretty common problem, is you want to get this function in terms of one unknown. We, we've seen this before. What's called the constraint e equation is the is you, we can use the other information that's given, namely that the sum of the two numbers is six. You can solve that equation for y. So when you plug back into the function s, I've gotten I've gotten what I what I wanted. I've gotten s as a function of just one unknown. Now I think the the subtle part and the most important I think is what is the domain of this function? Now x is a non-negative number, so the smallest x can be a zero. Now x can be 6 and no bigger because if x is bigger than 6 then y is negative. So this is a closed interval problem, which is good. Uh, the, the, way you, the way you finish this problem then is to use the closed interval method from section um, 4.1. Take the derivative, set it equal to 0, get your critical number, x equal 4. Then all you have to do is um, compare s of the endpoints with s of your critical number. You're, your absolute minimum is at 4, and if x is 4, then y is 6 minus 4, which is 2. Make sure you answer the question. The answer is the numbers are 4 and 2. That wasn't too bad. Now, in the second one, kind of a similar problem. At least it looks similar. Um, you want to find x such that the sum of x and its reciprocal is a min minimum. Okay, well, um, let's see. Uh, You're trying to write, the, again, it's the sum function, call this s. Uh, it's going to be the sum of x and 1 over x, so there it is. Now, however, x is positive, so x cannot equal 0, and there is no x closest to 0, so unfortunately you have to have an open interval here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the first derivative test to find the local, uh, in this case, local min. Take the derivative. The derivative becomes 1 minus 1 over x squared. Then when you set it equal to zero, let's get the LCD. You can see that this derivative is zero exactly when x equals plus or minus one, but in the domain of our function, the only critical number to have to worry about is x equal one. So you make a sign chart. Remember, we're using the first derivative test here. So we've proven since s prime changes from negative to positive, that's pretty easy to see. If you look at s, s prime here, uh, there's a local minimum of x equal one. Now, why is it all also an absolute minimum? Because of this. Since there's no other critical numbers, the, 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 the local minimum has to be an absolute minimum. Just, just say something like that. Here, here, here's the idea. We've proven there's a local minimum, right? If, if that's not an absolute minimum, wouldn't the function have to turn and then go, go down further? But if it turns, it would have to have another uh, turning point, in this case a local max, which means you have to have a cr critical number, see? So th th this, this proves that it's also an absolute minimum, and um, the answer is the number is 1. Okay, in this problem, they want you to find the dimensions of the largest rectangle that can be inscribed in a circle of radius 5 in inches. So the picture looks, looks kind of like this. Uh, you're drawing the rectangle inside of the circle, and the radius of, of, the, of, the, of the circle is 5 inches. Notice there's lots of ways you could draw the rectangle inside the circle. Couldn't you draw it so that the length is very small and the width is very big? Or couldn't you also draw it so the width is very small and the length is really big, so there's lots of ways to do it. The question is, how should you draw it to maximize the area? Okay. 
so the func so the function we're going to look at is the area function, and we know the area of a rectangle is length times width. But again, that problem that seems to arise a lot, we want to get this just in terms of one unknown. So uh, we're going to use the constraint equation, which is the good old Pythagorean theorem. I'm sure you noticed that. Notice uh, L squared plus W squared equals 10 squared, not 5 squared. So if you solve this for L, and then plug back in the area function, you get width times length becomes W times 100 minus W squared. And again, the subtleties of this would be, what is the domain? Now, W could equal 0. Of course, if W equals 0, then uh, your area of your circle is 0, which isn't very good. Uh, but it is de defined, so it's math mathematically possible to have W equals 0. And if W equals 10, then L, e then L equals 0. Well, again, you have area 0, but it's mathematically de defined. It's not, it's not a 0 on the denominator or anything. So we're going we're gonna to use the closed interval method here. So we take the derivative, uh, which is kind of a pain, set it equal to 0. Uh, we're going to have to get the common denominator here, which is square root of 100 minus W squared. Notice this is 0 precisely when the numerator is 0. So if you set the numerator equal to 0, divide by 2 and take the square root, w equals 50. So if you use the closed interval method on this, all you have to do is compare a of 0 with a of 10 with a of square root of 50, and, that, and, and a of square root of 50 is going to be your ab absolute max. Notice, if, a, if, if w equals square root of 50, what is, what is l? l is the square root of 100 minus square root of 50 squared, so it, it's the square root of 100 minus 50, which is the square root of 50, so what, what we just showed here is that L equals W, so it is a uh, square. That, that, though the dimensions are square root of 50 inches by square root of 50 inches. Okay, I think we've got time for one more. Look, look at this one. Here we have a closed box that has a square base. It look, looks kind of like this. So the function that what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make the surface area as small as possible. Now the, the volume is fixed. The volume is x times x times y. So x squared y equals 12 and the function that we're going to try to mini minimize is the surface area. Well, you, you have, that's just the, the area of the bottom is x squared, the area of the top is x squared. So um, the surface area function looks kind of, kind of like this. It's two of, two of those. You have the bottom and you have the top, so you have two x squares. And then notice the area of each side. Each side is always going to have area x times y. So you have four of those. So this is the function we're trying to mini minimize here. Well, what's the problem? The problem is that we have too many unknowns. We want to get s just in terms of one, one variable. The constraint equation, like I said earlier, is that the volume is always going to be 12. The volume of the box would be the length times width times height. So x squared y equals 12. Let's get rid of y. y equals 12 over uh, x squared. So when you march back over to the s function and you plug in 12 over x squared for y, you get this. So this is, this is the equation becomes s, the surface area, in terms of x, is um, 2x squared. This, this simplifies to 48 over x. It's pretty obvious to see that uh, x can't be 0, because if x is 0, y is undefined. So again, this is an open interval problem, I hate to say it. We're going to find the local um, minimum and then show that it's also abs absolute minimum. All right, so to find the local minimum, we take the derivative, uh, set it equal to 0. To set it equal to 0, you might want to um, get the common denominator, which is x squared. And, and it's going to be 0 precisely when the numerator is 0. Uh, you set 4x cubed minus 48 equals 0, divide by 4, take the cube root, x is the cube root of 12. So then we, we go over here, and we um, use the sign chart on this. Uh, S prime is going to be negative. If you pick a number less than uh, between 0 and square root of 12 and plug it into the derivative, here is the derivative over here, isn't it? Plug it into here. You close, pick a number close to 0, let's say. You can see that this is going to be negative. Pick a number bigger than cube root of 12 and it's going to be positive. So you show you have a local min. So by the first derivative test, you have a local min at uh, x equal cube root of 12. Now, how do you show it's an ab absolute minimum? Same re reasoning. You just, you just say that since there's no other criti critical numbers, it has to be an ab absolute minimum. What is the answer to the question? Well, x, the value of x is cube root of 12. What is the value of y? It's going to be 12 divided by the cube root of 12 squared. 12 over the 12 to the 2 thirds is just the cube root of 12, which equals x. So we showed it it's a, it's a cube. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll see you in class. Bye-bye.